Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Charlie Ryan. I'm privileged to be your MC here today. This is a wonderful occasion to see all the people gathered here, to think of all the memories that each of us has as we look at one another in the crowd. Uh, a special day and a special time. I'm indebted to Judge Kaufman for asking me to be the MC at this event. As a young reporter for uh, WSAZ Television and WCHS, I uh, knew his parents very, very well. That was in the 60s and 70s, and they were people that made, made things change. And they made things change for the better in West Virginia. All of us had a good time together. It was indeed and is now a special time uh, in, our, uh, in our lives. I think everyone in this audience would agree. These were dynamic people and people that left a legacy in West Virginia and made it better for not only us, but for people to come. So with that, I'm indeed honored to be here and to see all these individuals that have gathered for this special acknowledgement. This is indeed a legacy in the name Kaufman. My job is to introduce the very special people that are here to pay tribute today. I would ask the Honorable Kent Carper, President of the Kanawha County Commission, to come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Those who are able, please stand. Others, feel free to remain seated. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Please be seated. Then we'll ask the Reverend Ronald English to come forward. We were talking just before the event began, and back in the 60s, uh, it was my pleasure to introduce uh, Reverend English to the television audience. He had a uh, program on Channel 8, and uh, he remembers it, and I remembered it. It was called uh, Thinking in the Black, and he did a wonderful job and I think we should encourage him to return to TV yet today. <laughs> Delivering the invocation, the Reverend Ronald English.
Maybe bow. The world stands out on either side no wider than the heart is wide. Above the world is stretched the sky no higher than the soul is high. We come this day, O oh God, to reverently recognize the movement of your spirit in the hands and hearts of men and women who build bridges over treacherous terrain and troubled waters. We come on this West Virginia day to honor the loving service and gallant deeds of this celebrated family for their commitment of tough minds and tender hearts to be bridges of a more excellent way toward a more equitable and just society. And so we come in this service to give thanks for their service and for the valor and virtue, the resilience and resolve that imbues the Kaufman family. Bless the dedication of the bridge that will carry their name so that it might remind us that bridges are built from both sides of the water. May those in public service be ca captured by the Kaufman contagion to create constructive connections to build stronger communities in our state, in our nation, and in our world. So may we be encouraged from this day to be refreshed with zeal to serve a high calling in whatever work we are called to do with willing hands and open hearts touched by the angels of our better nature to build a better place right here and right now. Amen. Peace. Shalom. The welcome today will be by Lee Perry, President of the Communications Workers of America, Local 2001. Good afternoon. I am Lee Perry. I'm President of Communications Workers of America, Local 2001, and we are simply honored to be a part of this event today. I want to thank Judge Kaufman and the family for allowing us to do so. Much of the work that the Kaufmans were involved in is the work that we at CWA continue today, and it is so fitting that this ceremony should take place on the front lawn of the home in which Ms. Kaufman once lived. So on behalf of the officers, executive board, and the members of CWA Local 2001, welcome. There are so many people here today, and we want to recognize those individuals. Uh, we're going to turn to uh, Nancy Peoples Guthrie, uh, the Honorable Nancy Peoples Guthrie of the West Virginia House of Delegates. Uh, Nancy, if you'll come forward, it will be your job to pick out people in the crowd and uh, identify them. I would give this caveat if uh, Nancy misses one or two, uh, apologies in advance. Uh, get the word to the uh, uh, to the MC, and we'll try to make that recognition a little later in the program. Nancy, you've got your job cut out for you. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Um, I don't know where Mayor Jones is, but if he is anywhere in the audience, and I know he is, uh, he's been asked to uh, come up and have his seat on the stage where he belongs. <laughs> You know, when, when um, Judge Kaufman asked me to do this particular part of the ceremony, uh, there wasn't any political calculation involved in this. It was just, heck yes, I'm, I'm honored to be part of the program. Um, a lot of us, who I will begin to name here in just a second, have grown up together. Uh, we've uh, all passed our 20s and 30s together, 40s, and now we're all in our 50s. And uh, some of us in our later years. Um, <laughs> What I can tell you is that there's just no running away from DNA. The DNA that your parents instill in you um, is the DNA you're going to carry forward. And fortunately for all of us, the people in this audience today have said, it's OK for you to be part of the conversation. Take it forward. Be part of the conversation. That's what we have in Judge Kaufman, and that's what we have 
and so many of these other other prominent individuals that I'm going to try to get through. And if I do miss someone, I, I please, I apologize. Uh, Dameron Bradshaw, who is the mayor of Chesapeake. Norse Light, the Kanawha County Democratic Executive Chairman. Magistrate Joe Shelton, the Honorable Ken Heckler, the Right Honorable Kent Carper, Commissioner, Kanawha County. Danny Jones, our mayor. Uh, Brooks McCabe, our senator. Supreme Court Justice Tom McHugh, and a close personal friend of ours. Uh, Jack Yeager, the mayor of Dunbar. Wes Holden, Senator Rockefeller's office. Oshel Krager, Crago, former, finance sen uh, former senator from Putnam County and the finance chair for many, many years. The Right Honorable Truman Chafman, who is just a dynamic individual in the state senate. Uh, we've got Pete Thaw, who's a member of the school board. Bobby Nelson, a former state senator and a former mayor of Huntington's with us today. Margaret Workman, the right honorable Ma Margaret Workman, who's the Supreme, uh, one of the, our Supreme Court justices. Uh, we have Kathy Gatson with us today uh, of the circuit court, or she's the cir circuit clerk, excuse me. Corey Palumbo, you all know, a, a state senator who also has an awful lot of great DNA. Uh, we've got Park Goodwin. Watch out for Park. He's a former U.S. senator and everybody knows about that DNA pool. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Eckerson is with us today. She's the state director for Shelley Moore Capito's office. Danny Wells from the House of Delegates. Mark Plants, the Kanawha County prosecutor. Uh, Mark Manchin, the West, Vir uh, West Virginia School Building Authority uh, chairman or director. Bonnie Brown, a delegate with Kanawha County. Richie Robb, the former mayor of South Charleston, and we're glad to know that he's now a Democrat. Uh, Dallas Staples, former police of chief of, uh, he's the former police of chief, or chief of police, and the former ABC commissioner, and the Right Honorable Brent Benjamin from the st uh, State Supreme Court. Now, as I said, if I've missed anybody, my humble apologies. We tried to get you all as you came in. But thank you for being here today, and thank you, Todd, for letting me be part of this. Thank you, Nancy. And now remarks, special remarks from the Governor of West Virginia, the Honorable Earl Ray Tomlin. Governor. Thank you very much, Charlie. It's indeed my privilege and honor to join you today as we pay tribute to a family who gave so much to Charleston and to the state of West Virginia. A loss is difficult no long no matter how long ago it may have occurred. And because of the magnitude of this loss, I want to extend my condolences to the Kaufman family, and especially my dear friend of 30 years, the Honorable Todd Kaufman, because I know that this day brings you joy mixed with sadness. I'd like to offer my gratitude to Senators Corey Palumbo, Dan Foster, Brooks McCabe, and Eric Wells for spearheading this bridge renaming in the legislature. And it's all more fitting that we honor these individuals today on West Virginia Day. We each have the opportunity to help others. We each have the opportunity to serve. And it is clear that Paul and RJ not only embraced these thoughts, but lived them. Their commitment to helping others was evident not only to their family and friends, but to Charlestonians and all West Virginians. Paul, a statesman, led many important initiatives during his tenure in the eight years in the State Senate. He sponsored the state's Human Rights Act, tax reform, and free textbooks for school children, among other pieces of landmark legislation. Paul's wife of 30 years, R.J., was an advocate of civil rights and a strong feminist. R.J. served on numerous charities and civic organizations boards. She was a labor organizer and believed that the, benef in the benefits of diversity uh, by all people. Their son, Stephen Miles Kaufman, was following in his parents' footsteps. Stephen's longing to help others put him on a career path in the medical field. This was a family that truly lived their beliefs. With today's bridge dedication, I hope the people of Charleston will learn and understand 
how much this family positively impacted thousands of lives right here in this community. The renaming that we will witness today is so much more than just a name change. It's a tangible recognition of the connection between this community and the meaningful work of the Kaufman family. When our legislators propose naming a bridge after someone, they do so because of the impact that that individual or persons have had in an area. We want others to understand that we've been blessed to have such caring, considerate, motivated individuals in our lives. We want others to know that these West Virginians made a difference. They are part of the communities and our lives. And I believe if these three outstanding Charlestonians were here with us today, that they will be continuing their efforts to keep help and serve others. It was simply their nature. And it is my hope that when motorists see the new sign that says Kaufman Memorial 35th Street Bridge and travel across it, they will be reminded that we all have the opportunity to help and serve others and that the Kaufman story will encourage others to embrace the opportunity to help as this family demonstrated throughout their lives. May they rest in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. As an aside, I first met the governor when I was speaking to Ramey Barker's 10th grade government class down in Logan County a few years ago. And then this young 10th grader came forward after the uh, presentation and I uh, chatted with him and I thought, you know, this young man may very well have a future. <laughs> the, uh, the next speaker is one that I also have known since he was running around in his uh, uncle's home in Marion County, and indeed uh, he uh, turned out to be very promising also. Uh, it is a pleasure uh, to introduce our newest United States Senator, uh, the Honorable Joe Manchin. Thank you, Charlie. Appreciate it, especially you know how to pick them. Um, let me say to all of you, thank you so much for coming out to Todd, all of our dear friends uh, that are here today because uh, just the passion, the passion and compassion that, that Todd has. And uh, I think Nancy mentioned something about the DNA. And let me tell you something. All of us who believe that we were born as privileged children, it's not the material things in life that make you privileged. It's the unconditional love. It's a direction that you give from someone who cares and is willing to share and reach out to others. And those of us who were born in those types of family and raised in those types of family truly are special. And I think that's what we're here today to observe a special family that gave so much back to all the volunteers that made today possible, to the governor, to all the special guests, to all the dignitaries, elected officials, uh, to Senator Cart Goodwin, good to have you here, Senator Jay Rockefeller, and uh, also to uh, Congresswoman Capito. Um, American author Alex Haiti said, in every conceivable manner, the family is the link to our past and the bridge to our future. The de definition of the word bridge is a structure built to span obstacles. That definition also defines the Kaufman family. Over the years, the Kaufman family has met every challenge head on. This unwavering spirit, this deep passion to help those in need, this can-do attitude is shared across the Kaufman family and is extremely contagious. Rose, Jean, Paul, Stephen all had this extraordinary character and Todd and Tim have the spirit. It is indeed the common bond that still unites them all. So today is fitting for all of us to join together for the naming of the Charleston 35th Interstate Bridge to the Kaufman Memorial 35th Street Bridge. Um, I will have the honor and the truly honor and the privilege tomorrow to introduce, uh, introduce into the congressional record uh, a reading and it'll recognize the naming of the Kaufman Memorial 35th Street Bridge I'd like to share that with you. Mr. President, today I rise to recognize the naming of Charleston's 35th Street Interstate Bridge to the Kaufman Memorial 35th Street Bridge in honor of Paul Joseph Kaufman, Rose Jean Kaufman, and Stephen Miles Kaufman, who were tragically killed by a drunk driver on December 28, 1980. With the official bridge naming ceremony taking place on West Virginia Day, June 20, 2011, 
these three members of the Kaufman family will be honored and remembered for their love of giving, learning, and public service. Paul Joseph and Rose Jean were married for 29 years and had three bright sons, Todd, Tim, and their youngest son, Stephen, who was in the car with Paul and Rose Jean that heartbreaking winter night when the lives of these special West Virginians were cut short by the actions of a drunk driver. Paul Joseph Kaufman is remembered for his strong work ethic and passion for public service. He served as a West Virginia State Senator representing the people of Kanawha County and West Virginia with the utmost distinction. He is known for sponsoring the West Virginia Human Rights Act, and he fought for tax reform legislation and the Mountain State's first pollution control law. Paul was a true public servant, even when he did not serve in any official office. In 1951, he launched the first legal aid office in West Virginia, helping to give the poor much needed legal services. Not only was he a caring husband and father, he also was an established attorney and published author. Rose Jean Kaufman is remembered as a dedicated education and health advocate, a tireless fighter for civil rights, a labor organizer, and a compassionate community leader. She helped to organize the first hospice in West Virginia, now known as Kanawha Valley Hospice. She, sh she took time to get to know others and was truly inspiring to those in need. She had a deep love of arts, especially ballet and opera. She was a strong community leader, always providing a helping hand and a smile that could light the room. Stephen Miles Kaufman is remembered for his love of sports and for his desire to be a physician. His sense of overachieving constantly shined through as he often challenged himself by running long distances and climbing steep mountains in our state. He was just 20 years old when he passed away. However, his youthful spirit and passion for life live on in his brothers Todd and Tim. While Paul, Rose Jean, and Stephen are gone, they are not forgotten. Today and every day forward, we will remember and recognize their many contributions to the Charleston area with the official naming of the Charleston 35th Street Interstate Bridge will now be known as the Kaufman's Memorial 35th Street Bridge. This bridge truly symbolizes the passage from one generation to the next. Many characteristics of Paul, Rose Jean, and Stephen still live on in the Kaufman family. Features like unwavering public service, community service, and a willingness to help those in need. The Kaufman family still understands that we must have individual strength so that we can make our family and community strong. Today, the Kaufman family remembers. Uh, members have pushed through the tragic loss and spoken openly about the evils of drunk driving and about the negative impact that driving intoxicated has had on so many families. As your United States Senator, it is truly my honor to extend my most sincere appreciation to the Kaufman family for their outstanding public service that has been demonstrated throughout the different Kaufman generations. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Senator. It took a lot of people to bring us to this day. It didn't just happen overnight. And it had its uh, origins uh, in terms of government in the uh, West Virginia State Senate. And in talking with Todd, I know that no one did more than Corey Palumbo to make this happen. And my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Corey Palumbo, of the West Virginia State Senate. Thank you. I'll, I'll first say that uh, many people did more than me to make this day happen. So I, I would have to take exception with saying no one did more than me to make this happen. Um, I'd like to initially extend my condolences to the Kaufman family. Having lost my parents seven years ago, I know that time does help heal the wounds, but the, the sorrow and the, the feeling of loss never totally go away. So I, I certainly want to extend my condolences to you and, and appreciate you including me in this ceremony. Um, I just want to talk briefly about uh, the, the great personal relationship that Judge Kaufman's family and my family had. A judge recently told me that he recalls my parents coming over to uh, his family's house when they were dating and my dad was living in the Edgewater apartments, and, and I told the, told the judge that, uh, you know, he's got that great full head of hair, but that probably dates him just a little bit, having that recollection. <laughs> but he, uh, you know, we also talked a little bit about my father serving as, uh, as counsel for his father when he was Senate Judiciary Chairman in the late 60s, and then later succeeding him in the state Senate. Uh, Judge Kaufman and my dad also served together in the state Senate for six years in the 1980s uh, as, as they both 
told me previously, um, all on the back row of the Senate during those times. And, and I told him, I've served eight of my nine years in the legislature on the back row, too, and you come to appreciate that. Uh, Judge Kaufman's grandmother and, and my mother worked at Stone and Thomas together for many years, and as I understand now, his, his daughter is uh, going into fashion, too. And, and I know my, my parents uh, were truly fond of, of Judge Kaufman and, and his parents, and they had admired and, and respected them so much. And I know that, uh, that they would both believe that this was a, a long overdue recognition to be made. So the final thing I want to say, my, my mom always told me if you're, uh, if you're speaking, stand up tall so people can see you, speak loudly so they can hear you, and sit down quickly so they'll like you. And I know on a, on a hot day like today, I will do that with a long program, but just say that I was thrilled to, to help with this resolution and, and to be a part of this event. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. The bridge behind us has a lot of history and the history gathered on this lawn is uh, indeed impressive. There is a great state senator, uh, the Honorable Brooks McCabe, who is also a great historian, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the special bridge. Senator? Obviously, it's a... Uh real pleasure to be here in such an important event. The naming of the 35th Street Bridge really kind of brings together our past and our future. A bridge was initially built, conceived in the 20s, as a, an attempt to tie the north side and south side of Charleston together for significant future development, uh, both residential and industrial. It was a private venture served us well, uh, initially a toll road, then that was taken off. Ultimately, Charleston grew to the point, uh, particularly with the coming of the interstate, that we really needed to take, take our community to another level. The, the bridge that we're looking at, the 35th Street Bridge, was part of that substantial interstate construction, part of really positioning Charleston for the future. What I find so gratifying about today is that we're here honoring a family that in many ways in their time was indeed our bridge to the future. Their understanding of the issues, of the needs of the state, whether popular or not, they looked at what was important, what we needed to do, and they in fact were the leaders. They were the ones that provided the bridge. We are now standing here, sitting and standing here today acknowledging the good work of the Kaufmans, the entire family, as the family lives on, their legacy will be recognized in the bridge, but really, truly, is the future of our community. People say that cities are built on infrastructure. That is true. The 35th Street Bridge is a significant piece of infrastructure. Cities are really built on individuals, on individuals' vision and leadership. And that is truly what Charleston is based on. And at the head of the list, or the Kaufman family for what they've done and what they continue to do in their spirit as we recognize this bridge as a memorial. Todd and to your family, thank you for what you have given to the state of West Virginia and particularly to Charleston. Thank you, Senator. Journalism, they say, is instant history and no one has written more instant history than Jim Hott, the editor of the Charleston Gazette. He knew the Kaufmans very, very well indeed, and has some thoughts and memories of all those days uh, sitting in the Gazette editorial offices, uh, talking with them, and then covering them as they indeed changed the course of history in West Virginia. Jim Hott. Paul Kaufman was one of my very first heroes in West Virginia. I came down here to Charleston more than 60 years ago from a little Wetzel County farm town. I was a green teenager and didn't know much about the world, but I accidentally got a gazette job and I slowly learned about life and developed values. And then I realized that Paul Kaufman was crusading for every single thing I believed in. Uh, he 
always championed the little people and he started a legal aid society and he started Apple Red all to, to make the law work for little people instead of big corporations exclusively. I joined the Unitarians and the Kaufmans all came to the Unitarians even though they were reformed Jews. And then in 1968, when he jumped into the governor race, the Unitarians endorsed him for governor, even though churches aren't allowed to endorse candidates. I, I don't know how they got away with that. The, the Gazette also endorsed Kaufman as a noble crusader and reformer. But the old hands in the Gazette called me aside and said, you don't know anything about politics. He, he doesn't have a statewide power base and he'll be wiped out by the power structure. And, and they were correct, that's how it happened. But Paul never stopped crusading anyway. And the Kaufmans had a little camp out on Paradise Ridge in, in Putnam County and it was beautiful out there. And I used to take my little kids to their camp in the summer, but then all that world was struck down by a drunken driver.